All right, everybody, welcome back to yet another video about Solaris. A little bit, something a bit different today. Today we're going to be talking something that is not very much scripted or anything like that, or having a proper script attached to it and recording, etc. So it's a bit more of a free flow sort of video that I want to uh, want to do here. Specifically with this subject, it makes a lot of sense because the beta patch for 1.1. Clark, named after Arthur C. Clark, has been released, and uh, it's a good time to go over the patch notes and actually discuss what has changed or what will be changing once the uh, official version goes live on your games. So let's go on towards the features here. I got the patch notes in front of me, so let's discuss this right here, right now. First of all, features. Strikecraft attack behavior has been changed. That's a great thing. Strikecraft were a huge pain in the ass before. They did not do much. If you had your battleships, you had your cruisers, you put your Strikecraft on there, battleships would stay a million miles away from everybody else. Same thing for your cruisers. Using long-range weapons and your fighter craft would never even leave them. So you could never actually use them, which make them a huge, huge waste. And considering the amount of resources they cost, not worth the effort. This has now been changed. This is great. And they can now actually use them in combat. So yes, that's good. Uh, it's no longer necessary to control planets to demand them in war. But controlling planets that are set as war goals now generates more war score. That's great, uh, especially for attacking smaller empires. Um, just going for shock and awe, going straight for their core worlds, attacking them and getting maximum war score to uh, force a uh, peace or, and or surrender. Uh, that's great. That is great. It's now possible to set a custom ruler air title for your uh, custom empire, which means the world of the shit lords are finally here. Happy days. Uh, it's now possible to write a biography for your custom empire for those people that are entitled for role playing. There you go. Uh, added an influence reward for establishing communications or conversely being contacted. So this is the first contact bonus. Uh, if you, uh, you can get an influence bonus based on first contact. Uh, what it actually is, I do not know. We're going to go and investigate that in the future. A uh, collection of strategic resources, tile, planet tiles is no longer suppressed by buildings. I'm not entirely sure what this is about. Uh, I haven't actually noticed anything myself about this so it's something that uh, we can discuss in the comments below uh, added settings for ai aggressiveness in the galaxy setup screen great great little modifier there very happy with this uh, being able to set the aggressiveness of the ai empires huge huge bonus because right now in the default version of the game in 1.0 or the 1.0.1 version um, main issue is that the empires the ai is not aggressive enough and this causes very static um galaxies in the mid game of uh of solaris which is just not very fun so be able to increase his aggressiveness to something a little bit more higher faster paced be a lot more fun and making the mid game a little bit more interesting as well the ship right mandate for democratic empires has been reworked fair enough Added reward for Raid on Smuggler event. I believe this is part of the observatory uh, observatory event. So you can send out a, um, a transport ship towards a raid on a smuggler area. And then you now get a bonus for it, which is nice. Individualist Empire will no longer generate election candidates with slaver mandates. That makes perfect sense. And individualist pops will no uh, are less likely to vote for slaver mandated candidates. Fair enough. Slaver mandates no longer possible if slavery is outlawed. It is now possible to set difficulty in multiplayer. That's great for everybody that plays multiplayer. Uh, symbols of dominations are now available for everybody. And platypus species portrait and paradox fla empire flag are now available for everybody as well. This is great. Now, let's move over towards the balance, and specifically the first one right here on the list, as uh, what a lot of people have been asking me before, Matt, why do you not colonize all the worlds in your uh, Institute game? Like, you've got all these plants available. Why are you not colonizing these worlds? There's a good reason for that, and that was this one right here, specifically uh, this bit right here. So, right now, in the 1.0.1 version of the game, for every single pop you have on your planets, you have a 2% multiplier attached to your technology, uh, to technology research in this case. 
However, they're going to lower this to 1% per pop. However, for every single planet you own, technology will be 10% more expensive. Now, if you have a world that has more than, say, well, obviously more than 10 tiles, uh, actually, hold on, so it's 1% per pop, it used to be 10 so, yeah, it's basically half there, and it goes up by 10%. So you would need to get, uh, math is kind of eluding me, but I'm going to go with 20, 20 tiles here or 10 tiles or something along those lines. And then uh, it only bec then it becomes cost-effective to actually colonize these worlds in terms of technology research. I'm sure somebody in the comments will do the math regarding that. Unlocking spaceport technologies will make it more likely to get research options for new reactor techs. That's great. Being able to build more modules on my battleships using reactor techs are great. Spiritualist and materialistic uh, now get tech progress towards frequency tuning for reaching space war whales. Fair enough. Uh, space whale empire. Empire is running on space whale oil. Uh, that's that's always great. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff on ethics, making uh, stuff more interesting, like fanatics, xenophobes. It will get m more bonuses on uh, rivalries and stuff like that. Maximum of number of embassies increased by one xenophile. That's actually really cool. So you get two more embassies for uh, being fanatic xenophiles. So it goes up from two, to, uh, f it goes up from three to five. That's massive. That is massive. Holy crap. Uh, fanatic militarists no longer have an increased influence cost of being in, in an alliance. No additional influences from rivalries. That's fine. Uh, okay, this is interesting. Fanatic pacifist pops are now more unhappy militaristic empires. That makes sense. No longer increases food output, but reduces growth need by a pop for about 30%. So pop would need 30% uh, uh, less food to uh, grow itself. So that's actually quite decent right there. Now we get to the fun bits, the bits that everybody has been waiting on because uh, Corvettes are broken in the current build of the game, and Clark is going to fix that. Now, we already discussed the um, the Strikecrafts and the Bombers uh, at the start of this video. However, now we get to this bit right here, which is uh, rather important. Chemical thrusters, ion thrusters, plasma thrusters, and impulse thrusters are being nerfed into the ground. All bonuses to evasions are, evasion are going to be uh, cut down by 50%. You will not be able to use your evasion-based fleets uh, that effectively anymore because your evasion is going to be cut by 50% uh, at the base, at least. Sure, you can still add the um, the fleet school modifier or an admiral with an evasion modifier, but it's just not going to be that effective anymore. And especially considering the size of the Corvettes, uh, with a bit of luck now, the Strikecraft will be able to take them out a little bit easier. So that should be... A good thing so overall you're gonna to need to build more types of ships to uh, build uh, to protect your fleets so your battleships need flankers they need screening ships your cruisers need to be doing other things etc so you get a more uh, interesting combination of fleets uh, rolled out buildings research Institute modifier to tech research has been reduced okay colony shelter modifier to ethics divergence has been reduced by 10 percent theocratic governments additional oh this is actually theocratic Republic I'm gonna have to redo my uh, video on uh, <laughs> uh, on planetary management at this rate because uh, because of stuff like this additional core yeah the transcendent Republic additional planet cores reduced from plus four to plus two so you'll only get seven now instead of nine uh, this one is this is a huge nerf by the way the transcendent Republic one that's uh, that's a massive nerf right there. Uh, not being able to control that many planets directly and get their resources directly is massive. It's not something you want, really, but uh, fair enough. More power to you. Your income is no longer going to be that high. Aggressive fire rate bonus reduced. Butcher fire army damage reduced. And Glory Seeker army morale damage. Okay. Modifier, useful elite modifier. Effect on the lifespan has been reduced. Fair enough. Okay, the AI, computer-controlled empires, will start outlawing AI over time during, uh, during a certain crisis. 
yeah, the uh, AI crisis is currently very much broken, which is something that uh, needs to be fixed. Uh, for instance, the unbidden invasion is currently broken. The uh, vehement and the abhorrent never spawn. And uh, the same goes for, I believe, the scourge. The scourge are currently broken in such a way that uh, after their initial invasion, they will never spawn any more investors out of their queens, which um, basically stops them in their tracks. They need to be a bit more aggressive, in my humble opinion. Uh, AI will not colonize far waste systems uh, if colonize non-adjacent define is enabled. Okay, so they will no longer colonize space uh, if it's out uh, if it is not near their territory. So they will be able to just meander around, find a nice system, and settle down there, which is which is nice. But it's only if the colonize non-adjacent define has been enabled. Uh, we'll have to take a look at that. How does that how that actually is sorted out? Uh, empires that were previously controlled by a player, uh, say for example, if a player drops a multiplayer, will now refrain from making any major changes to the country for a period of 10 years. Same thing goes most likely for Observer. So uh, any is, is day one Observer uh, games, uh, that empire is most likely going to get crushed very quickly. Uh, fixed a bug where AI was modifying their species with bad traits, effectively giving them a lot of traits. And honestly, I kind of like this if they were the AI uh, giving them a lot of traits and basically crippling them. Kind of made sense from a I have no mouth and I must scream point of view. It was kind of a cool modifier. And it's a shame that it's gone. So, yeah. Fix the bug where military-focused sectors will not build military stations. I was going to do this in my upcoming video uh, about sectors, uh, which I'm currently scripting. It's a bit of a short one, so it shouldn't be too bad. But there is actually a script in the... Um, there's actually a line in the script regarding sectors about military stations. And basically, they're currently, if you set your uh, sectors currently to military uh, they will not build any stations, even though the script line is there. So this is now uh, this has now been fixed in 1.1. Very exciting. We'll actually get military defenses everywhere. Fix an issue where the AI AI would not enslave any pops. That is definitely an issue. Should be fixed as long as fast as possible. That uh, that slavery needs to happen. Uh, AI will no longer accept a white piece when they are winning in. Oh, this is just general AI. I thought you were talking about the. Uprising. AI will no longer accept a white piece if they are winning. Fair enough. AI is now more open trading access. Migration rights. This is great. This is absolutely great. And I'll tell you why. A lot of missions that you can get in your uh, status log involve your uh, research ships to go to places that they cannot go uh, under the current version of the game. So you wouldn't be able to go through uh, certain places in space to uh, research planets. And this is now... A lot easier so trading access for civilians should be a lot easier and uh, should make your early game a little bit more pleasant in terms of getting um, getting more research done because you know venturing out there to find these new places that is kind of you know the the goal of the game uh, discovery it's one of the tenets of the 4x uh, fixed a bug where the AI would offer peace deals that gave allies war goals to the player fascinating Fixed AI spanning the players with military access offers. Had that several times. It's annoying. AI is more aggressive against easily defeated targets. The, <laughs> the meek will most definitely not inherit the galaxy. Economy. Fix an issue where the AI would not disband ships even though they were running heavy energy crests that covered the deficits. Most likely because of annexing vassals. Sectors. Ah, here we go. So this is an important one. Respect the tile resources setting will now prevent sector from building the wrong type of building for a tile regardless of special circumstance. So basically, a sector will always try to build the bonus building for that tile. So if you have a tile that is set to energy, yet your um, it basically gets energy out of it, yet your sector is set to research, the, that tile will not be ignored. It will always be set to energy and all the empty tiles will go to research this is a huge deal this is massive and uh, this ties in nicely to my upcoming video on sectors uh improve the way sectors determine which resources the country needs when constructing building that's uh interesting uh final fi fix the bug where sector i will move pops back and forth fix budget issues were preventing sectors from properly managing spaceports and construction ships 
right because this has like this this sector this property management spaceports and construction ships most likely has directly uh to do with the sectors not building any military stations so that was probably the core of that warfare improved military tactics and handling of units uh, uh improving handling of military fleets versus transport fleets AI yeah, now fights crises that is nice uh fix issue with military fleets not moving uh, ai should be better at trying to invade planets taken by ai uprisings ai should be better at trying to take recontrol of occupied planets so overall ai improvements uh let's take a look here end of combat ui has been improved it looks a little like this uh diplomatic notifications and pop-ups have been improved it's look a little like this uh, colony ships will now show which pop it's carrying localization of armor shield penetration is updated and the weapon has both shield penetration and corresponding reduced damage to shields the two effects are replaced with a single line saying ignores x amount of shields habitability icons in the galaxy and views have been improved uh, and experimental gui scaling in the options video uh, it's a bunch of user modding, which for my channel is not particularly interesting. Uh, performance, I haven't had any problems with that, but uh, AI calculations and frame rate drops have been improved. Graphics, there's a bunch of stuff there. <laughs> Added digital art cover for the OST, and there is a bunch of other stuff here. Should no longer spawn. It's <laughs> yeah, I, I actually talked to the dev team about this one, and I basically told them, yo, you're... Um, your invaders, they spawn inside of uh, fallen empires and instantly die. So that's probably something you want to fix. Um, reduce the chance of generating improbable orbit anomaly. Yeah, that's all fine. Colony failure, VO not triggering. Injured queen project is now properly canceled and visual asset removed when another empire reaches its first. first. That's nice. Okay. Uh, fixed outdated avian names and other, uh, and other ones. Okay. Overall, it's uh, quite a uh, quite an expansive patch 1.1, and I'm really looking forward to how this is going to develop in the near future because 1.1 is going to be rolled out very soon, and which means that they're going to be starting work on patch 1.2, which is most likely going to take about a month to do, since considering the game has been out by maybe two weeks or something like that, and we will see what that will patch is going to be about. Um, I'm really looking forward to it, and then of course, uh, by the time that comes out, we'll most likely know what the first expansion is going to be about. So, if you enjoyed this video, I hope to uh, give us a like and subscribe. It's a little bit different from uh, the usual format that we have here for this channel, but I thought it was necessary in order to illustrate uh, the patches that are coming out, and expect more videos like this as uh, patch notes come out in the future. Once again, until next time, take good care of yourselves and each other.